The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome. I want to just say that I'm so grateful that you could be here with us this morning. Um, as we start our worship, I'm going to invite our organist, um, Karen, to start with our prelude music. That's why we're starting a few minutes early. So um, you'll get to hear Healer of Our Every Ill and All Are Welcome um, on the organ live. So we're very grateful to Karen to do that. I'm going to put on my mask and give you guys a chance to um, just come on and listen to this beautiful music and prepare your hearts for worship. Okay?
Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to worship. It is so good to be with you again this morning. Um, If you're home and relaxing and enjoying this worship, I invite you to grab up a nice drink, maybe your coffee or tea or something where you can relax. I said I'm not in my Disney princess setting anymore. I'm actually in this beautiful church, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. My name is Reverend Jennifer Richards, and I serve here at St. Paul's in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. It is a lovely building, and I'm grateful to be in here as the music is just a glorious gift to all of us. I have a few announcements for the community, Um, so I'm going to do the sharing of that now, and then we'll get into our worship. Um, First, I have a few folks that I'd like to have um, kept in our prayers. Um, first of all, we I did a service for Susan Coakley. She and her husband owned a restaurant here on the main street in um, New Cumberland. So the service was on um, on Friday. So I'm asking you to keep keep him in your prayers. All right. Sorry, I'm just checking text messages from folks to make sure that we're good because I. Um, not able to see all of your messages. Um, Also, Ruth Fite, a longtime member of the parish, uh, passed this week as well, so I'm asking you to keep the Fite family in your prayers. Um, As well, I read this morning that our president, President Trump, lost his brother Robert um, over the weekend here, so I'm asking you to keep the Trump family in your prayers. And my own personal family, my mother's sister, Rosalind, died um, after a battle with cancer. So I'd like to ask you to keep my family in your prayers. We'll continue to pray for Carter and Bailey and Heather and, and our friends Sonny and Bonnie as Bonnie continues to recover from the car accident. And I got a message from Christine Dapp about her husband, Ken, who's in rehab, and we're going to keep Um, the DAP family in our prayers. And, I mean, it's time for school to start, so we're going to keep our students and teachers and aides and bus drivers and crossing guards and administrators and lunch ladies and uh, breakfast makers, moms and dads, parents, grandparents, um, professors and college students, all of these folks in our prayers. Uh, Athletes and bands as they're trying to get ready for the new season and all who are trying to work through the feelings of what does it mean to um, start a new school year in the midst of COVID-19. And finally, the last person that I'm going to ask for prayers for is a colleague and a friend, somebody I went to seminary with. She's a mom of a young person, um, and she had COVID-19, and now it looks like it's coming back. So we're asking that you would pray for... um, for her family, Rebecca Iverson, Pastor Iverson and her family. Now, um, some good news for those of you who are interested. Next Sunday, there will be a worship service live and in person here. Uh, We're going to do that early at 9 o'clock here. That's our regular worship time. Um, But that's going to bump our live worship time back a little bit. So instead of 10, you get to sleep an extra half an hour. We're going to meet next Sunday here live at 1030. So I'll be with you live at 1030 next week. Remember to mark your calendars that it's going to be 1030. We will also produce some of the the, um, directions about worship um next sunday we will have communion we're going to use these little um i don't know if you could see it uh little pre-packaged communion packets so on one side is bread and the other side is grape juice um and we'll be using those for worship for communion next sunday without anybody touching um the communion materials for you Um, We're going to ask that if you're not feeling well, please don't plan to come. Uh, This is just, we're going to give it a try. It's going to be our first time meeting in person. So please keep that um, in mind if you're not feeling well. Okay. I've got that we also need to pray for Brad Burt and Bill Steigelman and family as well. So we're going to keep those folks in our prayers as Jim has just messaged me. 
The last thing that I have on my list of uh, announcements is that uh, our office manager, Jim, says that the devotionals for the quarter in the fall are in. So those of you who are on his regular list will receive the September devotional in the mail. But if you aren't on that regular list and you would like to receive the devotional, please do let the let us know at the office and we'll make sure or you can even right now leave a message and we'll make sure that that gets taken care of with all of that said i think that i'm ready for church how about you are you ready to worship (laughs) good then um, let's take a moment to settle our hearts and minds and prepare for worship as we call on god's name Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us take a moment to uh, confess our sins before God. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to take a sip of water here as I prepare for All Our Welcome. This is a long song. All Our Welcome is found in our hymnal on um, hymn uh, hymn number 641. I think I'm going to chop out a verse or two. Otherwise, it's going to take as long to build a house as it is. to sing the song. Um, I think what I'll do is just chop verse number three out and then we'll keep on moving. All right, so sing with me verses one, two, four, and five. (laughs) Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach 
beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard and loved and treasured taught and claimed as words within the word built of tears and cries and laughter prayers of faith and songs of grace let this house proclaim from floor to rafter all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and also with you we're going to pray the prayer of the day which is in our bulletin if you've got that go ahead and join me in saying the words together with me god of all peoples your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you teach us as disciples of your son to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth through jesus christ our savior and lord amen our first reading is from isaiah 56 verses 1 and 6 through 8 thus says the lord maintain justice and do what is right for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed and the foreigners who join themselves to the lord to minister to him to love the name of the lord and to be his saints all who keep the sabbath and do not profane it and all who fast my covenant hold fast my covenant these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered the word of the lord thanks be to god you hold on to those words because they're going to really impact our gospel message for today okay psalm 67 if you've got that on your in your bulletin please uh, recite the words with me it's a beautiful um, psalm it's one about um, blessing May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing. Continue to give us blessing is how one of the theologians I read put it. May God continue to give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Okay, we're going to move on now to um, Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 2 and 29 through 32. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham 
a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that by the, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in, a, in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation is, Lord, let my heart be good soil. I think we've sung it enough times over the weeks that maybe you know at least a couple of the lines, so please do join in singing it with me. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but this what's come out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes all evil intentions. Murder and adultery and fornication and theft, false witness and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David! My daughter is tormented by a demon! But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> I find this story shocking and offensive. <laughs> um, 
Every time I read it, I really don't understand where the heck is Jesus coming from in here. It doesn't fit my idea of who God is. Why would Jesus tell this woman that he's been sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? (laughs) That means she, who's a Canaanite and not an Israelite, and you and me aren't who he is sent to save. And that doesn't compute. It just doesn't hold up to everything that Jesus has said in other parts of the Bible or done with his life. And yet he said it. So what's going on here? Well, I can tell you. We debated about this as theologians on Wednesday. And for thousands of years, and I'm not using hyperbole here, for thousands of years, scholars have given thought to this and shared some interesting ideas about what's going on here in this story. From defending Jesus by saying, oh, he's just testing the woman's faith, to the other extreme of defending the woman and saying that Jesus is still kind of learning, like he's, he's fully human, remember? So he's still learning who he is as um, the Son of God and who he's sent to save. And pretty much all the distance in between those two theories have been shared. Ultimately, I I can't answer the question for you. It's one that I'm going to say, it's in my back pocket for when I get to heaven and I get to say, okay, Jesus, what the heck? <laughs> what was going on in that story uh, from Matthew 15? But let's just set that aside. I'll get to it again. I have a theory. I'll share it with you at the end. But I'm going to set that question of why it's said the way it is said and focus upon some other really fascinating things that are going on in this story. If you recall, over the past couple of weeks, if you've been here listening to these stories from Matthew, you've heard of interactions that Jesus has had with his disciples. Uh, The first story was the feeding of the thousands, um, where there were 12 baskets left over. Um, And then, and that was just with a couple loaves of fish, I mean, a couple loaves of fish, a couple loaves of bread, like three and a couple of a uh, couple of fish. Excuse my tongue. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then last week we had Peter walking on the water. In the first story, what do the disciples do when Jesus is exhausted? It's the end of the day. He tell they tell Jesus, send the people away. It's a deserted place. It's dinner time. And Jesus uses that moment to teach them that God shows up in deserted places to feed everyone who is hungry. In the second story from last week, Peter walks on water, if you recall. Then he becomes afraid and starts to sink. um, And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus, of course, saves him, but asks him the question in that moment, you have little faith, why do you doubt? So these two things show up in our story today. I know it's not the same story, but the themes show up again. First, when the disciples hear the Canaanite begging, just like Peter, mind you, was begging for his own life to be rescued, what do they do to her as well? They urge Jesus to send her away. Well, we know how Jesus responds to the disciples wanting to send people away. Jesus' response is to answer her need. Just as he fed and healed the thousands, and just as he rescued Peter and the rest of the disciples, mind you, on those choppy waters on the sea, Jesus rescues this this woman and her daughter. Second, when we are faced with the silence of Jesus, you remember in that story he just kind of didn't respond. And then the comments from from him. Her response to that is not to just walk away, but it is perseverance. And what does Jesus say to her with that persistent behavior? That she has great faith. Contrast that to that little statement that he talked about with his disciples in the previous stories of little faith. She has great faith. It seems that her recognition, at least her statement that she may be a dog, but even dogs get crumbs, showed that Jesus 
showed Jesus that she knew where to turn when the only place to turn was to Jesus. As I'm preaching here, it reminds me of when I was um, young and we used to say the, con- the confession at the beginning um, before the service and we say, I had poor, miserable sinner, you know, and, and the, this worm imagery of not being anything. I mean, like, it seems kind of reflecting this lady, like, I may be a dog, all right? I may be that. But even the dogs, even us poor, miserable sinners know where to go. We know to turn to God, who's the only one who can do the impossible. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He recognizes her great faith and he heals her daughter instantly. There's something else that I find fascinating in this story. It doesn't matter that Jesus told her that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It just doesn't matter. Because he is sent by the one who made bigger promises than to just Israel. Even the prophet Isaiah that we heard this morning knew that God has deliverance planned for much more than just one people. As God puts it through the mouth of Isaiah, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And the Apostle Paul helps us Christians today understand that it's not just us Christians that are inside. God doesn't just promise us. As the Apostle Paul writes, has God rejected his people? By no means. Okay, so I take that pretty seriously. That God is not going to reject any promises that God has made. God will not send away the foreigner who longs for healing. Nor will God betray promises made to the Jewish people or to any of us. That's a pretty potent thing that we need to remember when we feel like what we've done is unforgivable or or inconceivable or that God would would say, but I'm going to take away or revoke my promises. According to scripture, God is faithful to God's promises. All right, so I told you at the beginning that I have a theory, and are you ready for my theory about the story here of Jesus and this woman? I wonder if Jesus said that he was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel because they thought that they weren't lost. You know the story of the hundred sheep? The shepherd leaves the 99 because they're in the fold already. But the the lost one needs somebody to go out and find it in the wilderness. Maybe Jesus didn't need to go find this Canaanite woman because she's okay. Remember, her faith is great. She already knew who her shepherd was and where to turn when she needed that shepherd. And he's got to go out to gather up the ones who are lost. I don't know. I mean, I'm just a lowly pastor here, spitballing an idea, so to speak. (laughs) But maybe Jesus was right when he said he was only sent to find the lost ones. But he would obviously still take care of the rest of the 99 who were already in his care, but still needed help. In any case, ultimately, those outstretched arms of Jesus on the cross embrace all of creation. And the resurrection of Jesus breaks the power of every demon, including death. Ultimately, offering hope and healing to every nation, every part of God's green, brown, blue, beautiful earth and beyond. God's spirit, as we know, was sent over the chaos at the beginning of time and moves through the chaos of the Canaanite woman's life, even into the chaos of COVID-19 in our lives today. We can trust that Jesus, the good shepherd, sent to find lost sheep. Maybe you're one of those. The good shepherd will find us when we feel lost. So have faith. Like the great 
Canaanite woman, have great faith. This is my word for you this morning. Our hymn of the day is Healer of Our Every Ill. Really beautiful song. So if you're longing for God to um, offer healing for you or for somebody we are praying for, now's the time to reflect on that as we sing Healer of Our Every Ill, and that's in our hymnal 612. And drink again. Been talking a lot. <laughs> Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know our fears and sadness, grace us with your peace and gladness. Spirit of all comfort, fill our hearts. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. In the pain and joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding, give us all your vision, God of love. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our and hope beyond our sorrow. Give us strength to love each other, every sister, every brother. Spirit of all kindness, be our guide. Healer of our every ill, light of peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know each thought and feeling, teach us all your way of healing. Spirit of compassion, fill our hearts. Healer of our Light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Such a beautiful prayer. We'll continue with confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, so I'm looking on here. I'm going to check for any additional prayers because we're about to head in to our time of prayer. I, I got noticed that maybe we're a little distorted. I sure hope that things have cleared up, that you're able to hear things. But we're going to continue with our prayers of intercession. And if you've got more prayers, go ahead and put them out there on the um, uh, messaging, and, and I'll keep 
paying attention to uh, Jim's texts and he'll forward those prayers for us, okay? Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside of his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people who we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures, that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage. Renew soils stripped of nutrients. And refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world. Now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns. And for those who need your healing, we pray today especially for Carter and Bailey and Heather and Sonny and Bonnie and Ken and Christine. For my dear friend and pastor, Rebecca Iverson. We also pray now for Bert, uh, sorry, Brad Burt and Bill Steigelman and their families. And for all those we lift now before you in the silence of our hearts or in our messages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being, Lord. Grant this congregation, St. Paul's, and the one here online with me, Grant us grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal. And strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, Ruth Fight, who entered the church triumphant on Wednesday, August 12th, along with my Aunt Rosalind Martin and Susan Coakley and Robert Trump. Join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment to share that peace with one another. Please do leave a message of hope here on our messages this morning. Give yourself a great big old hug if you're socially distancing like I am. Uh, And if you're not with, if you're not social distancing because you're with your family and you can hug them, give them a hug. Also, during this time of passing the peace, if you wouldn't mind sharing a message on here of a place in which you're seeing God at work in the world, I'd love to hear it. Um, And I'll be responding to your notes later after the worship service. I'm going to read like I usually do the little message that's in our bulletin. As we steward the church into a new future, let's remember Jesus' words to the disciples. It's not so much about razor-edge adherence to law and strictures, but rather how one lives the life of faith. An authentic and faithful witness is needed for these difficult and shifting times. Oh boy, is that true. (laughs) We need each other, don't we? To share our faith, to be 
authentic Christians by loving each other for real. I would encourage you to send a note or uh, an email or a text message or snail mail to a friend in the church or somebody who needs to hear from you. Um, So I would encourage that because I think um, it feels really good. I know my daughter keeps going to the mailbox every day looking for a note, right? So, or a little package from her grandmother or whatever. So snail mail is nice too. Um, Share a note with a friend. Let them know you're thinking of them. It's a sign of Christian love. Let's continue our worship with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A blessing for you. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our final hymn is 650 in the uh, hymnal. Uh, following the hymnal, I'm going, uh, I'm sorry, the hymn, I'm going to say a little brief reminder and the dismissal, and then I'm going to leave the, the camera rolling because Karen said she'd like to come back and play a postlude for us. In Christ there is no east or west. In Christ, domiso, in Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one community of love throughout the whole wide earth. I think I need to take it up a little bit. In Christ there shall true hearts of everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whate'er your race may be. All children of the living God are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. Can you tell I really do need Karen back? (laughs) I'm glad that she's here to um, share that postlude music with us. Just a reminder that next Sunday, if you're physically well and you're able to be here with us and you'd like to share in worship um, in person, we'll be meeting at 9. The rest of us will be gathered online at 1030. All right? So be ready to join me at 1030 next Sunday. I sure do love you. I miss you. I'm so glad that you're here. Go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. We will. All right, I'm going to put my mask on.